So, as I said in the last video, I am at the point where I need to start thinking about what I'm learning and what I'm doing. And I've called this year the year of discovery. And I realized I've ended up with something of a sampler garden. I have too many things. Now, I know a lot of people would say, oh, you can never have too many things in the garden, but I do. The reason I planted so many different things is that I wanted to see what will grow, how well it will grow, how much I like it, and what kind of pest and disease resistance it has. Here in western Kentucky, we get pretty humid over the summer, and things like squash, it's not a matter of if the powdery mildew and the squash bugs will turn up, it's a matter of when. So I'm looking at that to consider what I'm going to have next year. Yeah, I know, I'm already planning for next year. And so far nothing has bothered the squash plants. They're starting to produce, they're really blooming. A lot of the blooms are male, but there are squash coming on now and I'm pretty excited about that because, as you all may remember, squash is my favorite vegetable. I mean, what's not to love about squash? You can bake it, roast it, fry it, grill it, pickle it, put it in soup, and it's all delicious. One problem with squash, though, is that it needs a lot of space. I've got squash back there, squash down here in the middle and squash right over here. When I say I went a little crazy with the squash, I'm not kidding. I've got butternut, spaghetti, red curry, honey bear acorn, all winter squash. I've got gray zucchini, round zucchini, patty pan blend, a delicata, a yellow crookneck, a lemon squash, and I'm sure I'm forgetting a couple. I had seeds. People gave me seeds. I planted everything. What was I thinking? I was thinking squash. That's what I was thinking. Here's the pumpkin patch. This is white pumpkins, pie pumpkins that I saved from a pumpkin that I got last fall, jack-o'-lantern pumpkins, and I think more pie pumpkins down on the end. That doesn't include the Cinderella pumpkin and the Cherokee tan, which are currently over there taking over the back third of the garden. Why do I need so many pumpkins? I don't. The truth is, I don't. But what did I do? I got more pumpkin seeds. Those pumpkin seeds are Lady Godiva's though, and those are the ones that uh, you grow for the seeds. So what I'm thinking is if the Cherokee Tan and the Cinderella produce and they make good pies and they're also good for savory dishes then I only need the Cherokee Tan and the Cinderella. I'll save those seeds and all of these next year I won't grow. We'll see how that goes. The Lady Godiva pumpkins will also be planted next year but I can tell already from the way that Cherokee tan over there is taking off, I could plant one or two plants right here in the middle of this patch. This is 30 feet. That is the Cherokee tan a few days after the last video. It is heading for the tomatoes, for the trellis, for the weeds, for the fence. It is just going everywhere. I really do think one of these is going to be enough. I've got the same thing going on with the melons. I planted all kinds of melons. The Charentes, the Hales Best, and the Amish melons are all cantaloupes. I only need one. The Kajari melon and the Tigger melon I have yet to get anything from. They're growing. And 
if I like them. I'll consider growing one of those again next year. But since I'm really wanting to be more about production, I need to narrow my focus. I also have quite the sampler of tomatoes. I have lots of tomatoes. There are 33 plants in this section, and there are more plants over there. I have I have cherry tomatoes, Roma and Roma style tomatoes. I have the slicers. I've got beef steaks, brandy wines, Russian purple, white beauty, cosmic eclipse, cherry tomatoes. I think those are probably sweet 100s. I don't remember exactly. It's really too many. What I need to find is one good slicer, one good Roma style for sauce, and one cherry that I can grow three or four plants of each one, and that should be plenty of tomatoes. And of course I did the same thing with the beans too. I have pinto beans, black beans, wax beans, and yard lung beans also known as asparagus beans. Those are the kinds of beans like you get at the Chinese restaurant that are stir-fried with the garlic and the, the good stuff. I like all of those beans, but I only have a short section of each one because I don't have room. What I need to do is find the best crop and go with one or two beans and just put them over there and let them go. I also have four kinds of carrots in a four by four bed, basically. I've got about a quarter of another, maybe two foot square in another part of the bed that I've also planted carrots in. But again, I need to find the one that grows best. The carrots from last year are just now getting big enough to pull. So I don't know why that happened. But I'm gonna try different varieties this time and see if they do better by fall, that'd be great. If not, well, back to the drawing board, or I stop growing carrots altogether. I'll have to decide later on. I know I definitely want to grow sweet potatoes again next year. Over here, I set aside a 10 by 10 foot space, and they're growing well. Of course, I won't know what I get until the end of the season when the vines all die back, but I really think that uh, sweet potatoes will be an excellent thing to make space for. I also need to learn to be a little more patient. I ended up with three different kinds of watermelons. Not exactly on purpose. I wanted to plant the sugar babies. I wanted to plant the moon and stars. My original idea was to trellis the sugar babies because they're small. They don't get very heavy and then just sort of let the uh, let the moon and stars roam where it would give it a nice big spot I planted the moon and stars seeds a month went by nothing came up I planted the sugar babies few came up so I put them in a little smaller spot then the moon and stars still didn't sprout, so I bought more watermelon seeds. I got Jubilees because that's what we could find at the local store. What with the pandemic and everything and all the, the run on gardening sites, I figured it would probably take longer to actually get the seeds and then it would be too late for me to plant them. So I bought them at the store and I planted them and <laughs> All of them sprouted. I planted eight seeds and I got eight plants. So, three types of watermelon. Do I need three types of watermelon? No. Watermelon is one of those things you really can't preserve. You have to kind of eat it as it comes in and then you're done. I may try dehydrating some, but I don't know how well that's gonna work because they are mostly water after all. So again, I'll see what does well, what we like the best, and go from there. So as hard as it's going to be to restrain myself, I need to learn more about what I'm growing, how it's growing, 
what's going to happen with it, how much space it needs, because I need to use this place to my best advantage. I only have just a hair under a quarter acre here. And on that quarter acre, there's a shed, there's a house, there's a front yard with giant shade trees, there's a driveway, there's a patio. That takes up space. I have maybe a third of the place in the garden right now. And while I would like to do more, I still want a greenhouse, I still want my chickens. For what I have right now, I need to figure out what's going to work best for the in-ground and the one raised bed that I have until I can afford to do more. I'll do a more comprehensive garden walk later on, either this week or the beginning of next week, but you can see I've got a lot of weeds in my walkway there. I have been out with the hoe this morning, getting the weeds out of the tomatoes and checking for things that need tying up again, and I need to get on that. But my vision for the future is to basically enclose all of these areas that I have raised to grow the beans and the squash and the melons to put frameworks around those so that I can have a series of raised beds. I think that would serve me and the plants quite well, but that's going to be some time in the future. So that's where I'm at right now. While things are starting to produce, I am also starting to process the information that I'm learning. I'm looking at performance, at pest resistance, at disease resistance, productivity, usefulness, and which one I like best. I'll keep you updated on that progress as well. Meanwhile, I gotta get back to hoeing weeds. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.